Hey, Michael with X-Force PC. Recently, I was doing some performance testing with the RTX 4090 and X-Plane. That's the new $1,500, $1,600 graphics card from NVIDIA. And I was having a lot of trouble creating a GPU bottleneck. And what my suspicion was is the CPU was the bottleneck in every case. Therefore, if the CPU is the bottleneck, you can't create a GPU bottleneck or a graphics card bottleneck. So, um, I tested it, you know, 1080p, triple 1080p, 4K. I was just getting the same results on every test between the 3080 Ti and the 4090, but the 4090 is 50-60% faster than a 3080 Ti. So that told me, okay, I'm CPU bottlenecked here. And so I am running, was running on a 12700K i7, which is, has eight performance cores and four efficiency cores. So 8P means eight performance cores and 4E means four efficiency cores. Efficiency cores are lower speed, lower power cores that are used for uh, operating system background tasks. And it's a way for Intel to put 12 cores on their processor without creating excessive heat. If there were 12 performance cores, then you'd be dealing with a lot more heat than if it's eight and four. So um, what I did, I said, okay, well, I need to figure out how CPU bound are we when it comes to the number of cores. The easy, easiest way to do that is just keep taking away cores until we see a performance drop. So I ran the built-in X-Plane uh, benchmark it's very high settings uh, on this particular benchmark. It's a command line thing, which I'm not going to get into right now, but I got 53.7 frames per second on this benchmark test that I ran. And I ran the same test, obviously, every single time. And I said, okay, well, let's, let's figure out how many cores X-Plane's actually using. So I ran it again with eight performance cores and zero efficiency cores. I simply disabled the efficiency cores, and I got... 52.4, which is a very small difference, really within the margin of error, I would say. So uh, let's let's so well, let's take it on down. Let's don't waste going to seven, six, five, so on and so forth. Let's just go on down to four cores, four performance cores, zero efficiency cores. And when I did that, I got 52.3. Again really no difference. I mean, you could run this test five times and get 52.4, 52.1, you know, within the margin of error is what that means essentially. So I said, okay, let's take it down to three performance cores and zero efficiency cores. And here I got essentially the same result, 52.5. So, okay, let's take it down to two cores. So dual core processor here. <laughs> which we haven't been on in 10 years probably. And with two performance cores, zero efficiency cores, we saw a little bit of a, of a drop, 50.3. I would say that's probably outside of the margin of error, but it's still so small, your eye would never notice that difference. Um, so, so let me take it down to one core. Well, then X-Plane wouldn't run. It said you must have at least a quad core processor. And you may say, well, how did you get two performance cores to run? if the X-Plane requires a quad-core processor. Well, that's because hyper-threading is active. So with hyper-threading, it splits each core into two virtual cores, and it looks to the operating system like you have a quad-core processor. So I said, okay, well, I can't do one performance core unless I turn on two efficiency cores. So I did that. I ran it with one performance core, two efficiency cores, and in theory, Windows background tasks are running on the efficiency cores, and X-Plane is running on the performance core. And so for that, we did see a little bit of a difference. We got 43.9. So what does this tell us? Well, it tells us that X-Plane is very much a single-threaded application, unfortunately. And, you know, I've been hoping for this to change for a long, long time. And it just still hasn't changed, unfortunately. Um, so at the most, in my opinion, X-Plane, when flying, uses two cores uh, when you're flying. Um, now, when you're loading, like let's say you're flying in LA and you decide you want to go fly in New York, there's that loading process. X-Plane will use more than one or two or three. I think it'll even use up to eight, maybe even more cores during the loading process. And when you're starting X-Plane up, 
it will use more than a couple of cores. It'll use, you know, multiple, many cores. But that's the only time I have found that X-Plane right now, unfortunately, is using, heavily utilizing multiple cores. I'm going to take a look at Microsoft Flight Sim 2 and see if the, the same thing holds true. You know, a lot of games are relatively uh, single-threaded, but it's, it's getting to the point now where more and more games, the modern games that are you know, coming out right now, are starting to use, you know, four or five cores, maybe even more. So hopefully X-Plane gets there soon. If you're looking for the bottleneck in your system, be highly suspicious of your processor, especially if it's more than a few years old.